There is a stirring. Anybody else feeling it right now? Mm -hmm. There's kind of a stirring that is going on, and I just, you know, sometimes you just want to wait. That song started going over, but wait, wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord. I really feel secure. That's that's and a great, a safe, yeah, a safe feeling right now. That's a great way to describe what what I'm feeling too. It's, and in fact, I'm when you said that, my Holy Spirit went off all over my people bumps. You know, oh. my way we call them goose bumps, but. Uh, the goose have goose have bumps. Like that, right? When you fall off a puppet. When you fall, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Thank you for sharing that because that's that's a great way of illustrating. Um, they that you know that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, mm -hmm. which is to be in Christ, shall be under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do at the moment. <laughs> for those that are just joining in we just had some time of worship and there was kind of a just a, a sweet presence that was going on and we were just kind of waiting on the Lord and and uh, whatever he wants to do this morning good morning Melissa we, we, we prayed for you today good morning Mary without commenting I can't see the real little tiny pictures up there in the corner so if you comment I'll see you but uh, anyway we just had a we had a, little, a sweet time uh, in, in worship this morning uh, pray for all of those that, that have been challenged and are, are going through some things this week and so we're just thankful we're thankful for the, 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 the love and the care of our Heavenly Father and that he that he cares about us kind of, I'm feeling like I'm just being challenged a little bit to proceed here Lord we just thank you for your spirit your Holy Spirit we just thank you for the, the presence of the Holy Spirit here this morning the comfort of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. the, the rest that is causing the weary to rest and we just thank you for that place of security knowing that nothing can separate us from your love thank you for that sweetness I hope you can feel what we're feeling out there, what we're feeling in this room this morning, but it's just a beautiful, a beautiful thing. Morning, Lana. Sorry, I'm not trying to be just quiet on purpose, but I, I'm just I'm still trying to wait. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. important that that we remember that we're declaring every day God's protection around us Amen. Um, I someone was telling me and I, and I know the people are telling me about someone who was sick with COVID and the comment that they made it was like they said it was like a dark heavy mm -hmm. um, and then the other person said that and the one person their um, husband is a minister they're in the ministry and the person I was talking to I said it is a we, we know where the disease comes from it's a, a the spirit of this here. world yeah. it's, and I said I it wouldn't surprise me that you know and I said I and because huh. she was telling me she said to them I hope you're I said yeah that, that they just declare amen. it's not just reading it amen <laughs> you got to declare it it's amen. not automatic you amen. know Amen. I just keep declaring that protection and like a bubble around us. Yeah. yeah. Like that is, we have our Jesus bubble around us, and Amen. we just keep 
you know, we um, we do wisdom and you know wisdom and things we do, but just keep declaring that over us, over our families. Yeah, um, because Amen. this is not a, it's not a joke. <laughs> no, it's not. It is not a joke. And so the people who think it is, I I I just hope they're not influencing other people. You know. Right. Um, right. So it's yeah. I like but, that. I like that illustration. It's like a, the Holy Spirit bubble wrap. Yes, know. right. He has us. Uh, he has us protected, and uh, and so yeah. He is. But I've heard the same description of this on the one lady. I felt like a band around her. And it was just like a. It's like a darkness. Yeah. yeah. So we just rel we just we just release mm -hmm. those that are, that are being held in that. Yes. yes. And speak life. Speak the, the, right. the power of the Holy Spirit to be loosed in, mm -hmm. in all of our lives and to, to keep us in that place of, pre of safety that and shelter. Of and shelter. shelter right. Right. Yes, yes. Amen. Thank you for that that place of rest and shelter Jesus. against against all enemies, mm -hmm. against all the enemies all of enemies. God, yeah. all the enemies of God that would try to, to come in. Sharon's all right. Watching from New Hampshire. Who? Sharon is watching. Sharon is. Oh, hi, Sharon. Good morning. I see there's Susan and Mary. What did yeah. Mary say? I can't see what she Mary says. says, I fear not because he tells me not to. I fear yeah. not because he tells me not to. Amen, Mary. That's good. That's a good word. And Jesus' protection is 24-7. Jesus' Amen. protection is 24-7. Yeah. Under the shadow. And no one can snatch us out of his hand. And then he said it about his father. And he said, my father loves you too, and nobody will snatch you out of his hand. So there's two good hands we got. And it's not all state, right? That's right. <laughs> all right. That's good. It's an all loving father. Well, I feel a release to go here. So let's. The, the title of the message this morning is Unity of the Spirit. We're going to continue to look at Ephesians 4. Uh, you didn't read it? Yeah, well, I didn't. It's a little longer than Ephesians 3, so maybe that's why. Uh, I know. Ephesians, Ephesians well, last week, we uh, I really felt like. Uh, it, the Lord wanted to bring us into a place of really understanding and savoring and, and enjoying the, the, the purpose of the Holy Spirit in a way that I didn't understand as well until I realized that the main purpose of the Holy Spirit is to, for the, the, the Father's love to be shed abroad in our hearts. Because sometimes we don't feel that, that, and sometimes we don't feel that we deserve that. And that's what grace is. It's undeserved. It's, it's because, he, because of his love. And so for us to be reminded of the purpose of the Holy Spirit is important. And, and so we're going to continue in that, in that, uh, uh, along that line this morning uh, with Ephesians 4. And this, you know, he starts off the chapter with an exhortation to unity. And so he's talking about, uh, in verse 3, he says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So as I was as I was looking at this this week, and based upon what we were looking at last week, what is the unity of the Spirit? Uh, what causes the unity of the Holy Spirit in our in our atmosphere here and in, in the body of Christ? <clears throat> well, based upon what we, we learned last week, first of all, it's that we know that He loves us, not because we deserve it, but because of His mercy and His grace. And that's what the finished work is all about. But what the unity of the Spirit comes in a, into, a, into an atmosphere when those that are gathered uh, and, uh, and have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying um, are, on, are, are receiving the same conviction from the Holy Spirit. And it's not conviction of the things that we're not doing right or the things that, we're, that we are doing right. It's the things that that uh, that he is trying to convict us of. First of all, his his uh, the steadfast love of the Father that never changes, that's eternal, uh, and that we're we're in that place of safety and we're in that place of love. But also, what he said in John 16 that we that we we all understand what the Spirit is saying to the church regarding our righteousness, regarding the fact that the enemy has been judged. Uh, uh, the, the right the con, the conviction of the the sins of all of our sins have been have been taken away by Jesus at the cross and the only sin that remains in the world today is the sin of unbelief in the gospel and so when a group of people are gathered it's not like you know sometimes you just want to 
you want to make these these things that Paul's saying here just you know be some kind of a feeling, but it really isn't a feeling. It is it is a it, it is a conviction. It is a reality that causes the unity to, to happen. And, and, and when everybody's in the unity of the conviction of the Holy Spirit, then that's when the Holy Spirit can really do something. If you look at what Paul said, go ahead. Um, passion. Um, be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace, being one body and one spirit, as you were all called into the same glorious hope of the divine destiny. Divine destiny, amen. And so there's a, there's, there's a, there, there's, you know, we, we, we used to call it the, in, in some of the old days, the Spirit, Holy Spirit activation. Well, there's nothing will activate the Holy Spirit more than a, a group of people in unity about the message of the gospel and about receiving the truth of that gospel uh, and, 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 and being in unity about the, real, the reality and the realization of all that, the, the, that encompasses what the finished work of Christ is all about. That's where the spirit can. That's where there's a sweetness because, as he goes on to say, uh, the bond of peace. See, if we know that our peace is based upon Christ and Christ alone, it's not based upon our uh, what we're doing, right or wrong, uh, it, but it's ba it's based upon the, the realization and truth of what He has done for us, and that we're really we're really receiving and, and, and feeling and sensing the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you'll see at the end of this chapter, he talks about the not grieving the Holy Spirit, and so we're going to tie these two together uh, as we as we go on here this morning. But I think it's important for us to understand that there's nothing that brings greater unity of the Spirit than those that are uh, being being allowed to, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth, and all truth being those things like he said in John 16 and John 14 as well that he was that the Holy Spirit besides shedding abroad in our hearts the love of the Father is to, to bring us into all truth. Um, and we know when Jesus was standing before Pilate, you know, Pilate asked him what, what, what is truth? And he was standing right in front of him when he asked that question. So Jesus is the way, the truth, truth and the life. life. So when you get in the way, then you get in the, you get in the vein of the truth and then life begins to come. And the life of the Holy Spirit is it, it begins to really be enriched in a, in, a, in a group of people that are in that unity. If you're if you're hearing a mixed message, there can't be unity of the Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will will, will not will not respond and not act uh, in a in a in a place where uh, the the people are not in uh, where the people are thinking that they're part of the reason something is happening or not happening. Whether they, we're going to talk about that in the next section of the notes here. Uh, in First John chapter two, uh, you don't have to turn there; it's right there in the notes. But it says, uh, John says, "Do not love the world or the things in the world." That doesn't mean the earth. What that means is the world system. Don't love the world system, or if there are the things that are part of the world system. And then he goes on to say, "If anyone loves the world, the world system." The love of the Father is not in him. Uh, for all that's in the world, in that world system, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, pride is being the key word there. See, pride is always going to be based upon what we're doing in some way and not what Jesus has accomplished for us. So the world system is, in total, is totally antagonistic against the, the, spirit, the Holy Spirit and the spirit that's from above. This, this, uh, there's, a, there's a spirit in this world. There's a spirit of the world. And that there's, there's a spirit that's from God. And, and, and it says, Paul said in Corinthians, that we've not, we have not received the spirit of the world. But we have received the spirit that's from God. Why? That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God through the work of Jesus Christ. And so... Uh, so what does Jesus mean by the world? Well, I already answered that question. The world system, the system that's that's in, that, that's based upon uh, the pride, the pride of this life, the pride of what I can accomplish, the pride of what I want, what I want to achieve apart from God. That's what the Tower of Babel was. That's what that's where the fall started in the in the garden. It was about, all about trying to to achieve something rather than receive something. And there's no way that the Holy Spirit can move in, in the midst of that. Uh, and that's why he said, don't, don't love. You know, there was one of the disciples that Paul mentions in Acts where 
he said, having loved this present world, he left. You know, he left the ministry that was with the Apostle Paul. So uh, we have to be sure that we don't allow the spirit of this world to capture us because it's, it's important that the unity of the spirit, especially as we're seeing the day of the Lord approaching, the unity of the spirit is so, is so important. Uh, and I, you know, at, based upon what we were talking about last week, I think that the enemy is trying to antagonize us. He's trying to get us back into uh, discussions with people on worldly things, the things of this world system. Anybody, was anybody relating to what I was saying last week? Mm -hmm. So he gave me, uh, he gave me this something that I feel like he wants me to say a lot of times when I feel people kind of come to me and say something that wants to kind of put you into a dialogue that's about something that's not, you know, that's not about the kingdom of God. It's just about this struggle, this tension that the enemy wants to keep us involved in. And that is, will God love us? Will, just, will God love us? You know, because what that means is I want him to go, I want him to love me. God love us. God love me in spite of what's, what's going on around us, what's going on in the government, what's going on in the world. And God love them in the same way that they would know the love of God. And that's what I, I went back and read John 17 where Jesus prayed that prayer, uh, that the world may know that, that God loves us. How's he going to do that? How's the world going to know that God loves us unless that's what, the, that's what the expression of our life is instead of being drawn into these, 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 uh, these battles that are really not, that are part of the world system. And most of them are, are, are grounded in pride anyway. And so God help us. God love us. God love us. Uh, not to get in these discussions that have no profit to them but to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So we have, we, we have peace with God this morning. And it's not based upon what's going on anywhere in this world. In fact, I, I was listening to Rob Rufus, the, his message from last week is about being, you know, uh, embracing your inner alien. We're aliens in this world. I hope you, I hope you know that. And people say they don't believe in aliens. Well too late for me because I am. I'm a resident alien in this world. I'm not, I'm, I'm in this world, but I'm no longer of it. Anybody with me on that? New creation. We are new creations in Christ and our dwelling place right now and forever is in, is at the right hand of the Father. We're seated with him in heavenly places in Christ. Amen? So uh, we, we are not, uh, we're no longer of this world system. And so we have to be careful not to entangle ourselves. Paul always used that word a lot, entangle. Don't be entangled in a yoke of bondage because the enemy wants it. He wants the unity of the spirit to be become disunity. Do you think, do you feel any disunity in the world today? Yeah. You feel like there's any disunity? Well, that's because the enemy doesn't want unity. He wants disunity because that's where he can stop the operation of the Holy Spirit in the midst of a group. So we want the unity of the spirit. That's what we're endeavoring. That's what he says, endeavoring to keep that. Amen? <clears throat> So, uh, now, uh, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 again, verse 7, Ephesians 4, verse 7, and I didn't even, I forgot to bring my passion, so I may have to get Donna to read occasionally here too. Thank you, Donna, for, for being there. Uh, <clears throat> it says, but to, but to each one of us, there's, there, he go, talks about the body, one body, one spirit, and you're all called to one hope, uh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Lord, one God and Father of us all who is above all, thank God, through all, and in, the word should be us there, in us all, we have the whole, we are temples of the Holy Spirit that are meeting together in this room, representing the body of Christ at Grace Center Houston, amen? We're part of the body of Christ. What an amazing reality that is. And, and it says, but to each one of you, each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. What does that say in the Passion? Uh, John, and verse he seven. has generously given each one of us supernatural grace according to the size of the gift of Christ. So that better describes the question: How would you quantify this that gift? According to the size of His gift, the gift of His grace, as we learned last week, that we would know the love of Christ that that you can't know except by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. And thank thankfully we have the Holy Spirit that we're that we're in unity this morning, realizing that all of those things are ours 
uh, everything he is and everything he has. That's Romans verse chapter eight. And as Tina always, uh, and, and nothing that he's not. We're everything that he is, we are, and everything that he has, we have. And everything that he's not, we don't, we're not. And that's where we have to be careful uh, to understand that. And that's what he goes into. Ephesians 4 is really just like Colossians 3. In fact, we're going to go back and forth. We're going to go there here in just a second. But the, 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 the quanti the, how to quantify that gift is that, that we've each been given, not just the, it's not just a smidget of his grace, but according to the, the, the what is the word in uh, the passion again? Size. The, the size, according to the size of, God, of his grace. That's, a, that's an amazing reality. Um, and then he goes into saying that, that he ascended, and of course we ascended with him. Um, but it says, first of all, he descended. And I, think, I don't think that's by accident that he put that there, because he wants to realize that when he descended, he descended with everything that was on us, that was opposed to us, that, caused, that was causing destruction and caused us to be in a place of spiritual death. He descended first to get rid of all that. So that when he ascended, there was none of that left. So when he ascended and we ascended with him, all, the, all those things that, that were the reason he descended are no longer evident, no longer a part of our life. Amen? And that's why Paul is trying to make that, that point clear, uh, is that he did, the first thing, he, he didn't just descend in all power, he first descended to, to, to rid us, rid all of us, of, of all those things that were, that were causing death and destruction in our life. The law of sin and death. He was destroying the power of the law of sin and death. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, so when he ascended, he gave gifts to men. And so uh, the gifts that he gave us was, was a measure of the size of, of his grace. And that is, that is just an amazing truth there. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 says, and he, gave, and, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some ev uh, evangelists, some pastors and teachers for for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to here's the word unity again till we all come to the unity of the faith and by the way the unity of the faith what does the word faith again mean the revelation of Jesus Christ it's the realization uh, you, you, you can't have realization until you have revelation amen so it's that unity of the faith is really the same as the unity of the spirit. The Holy Spirit's trying to, 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 you know, to, to uh, cause us to understand that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's, he's the author of this realization we have concerning him, this revelation of, him, of himself, and the Holy Spirit is, is causing us to, to grow into that uh, understanding. And the knowledge of the Son of God, so he's talking about the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we we are being, by the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, growing uh, in our knowledge of the, of the Son of God so that we may no longer be, like it says in the next verse, no longer children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. For 40 years of my life, I was really, I was... Um, very, I was spiritually immature concerning the word of righteousness. Paul talks about that in Hebrews. If you're not skilled in the word of righteousness, then you're, you're like a child. You're like a baby. You're going to be carried about with all kinds of things. You're going to be right back into the captivity that you, we came out of. So um, the question in that, in that section of the notes there is the two important purposes of the local church. One of them was the first one. Equipping of the saints to do the work of the ministry. So uh, the, the pastors are really not the you know that that's why I love the that that Jesus said he doesn't like a, a, a laity and a deity or separation of of people in a that are es, that are elevated in a church uh, and everybody else just supposed to listen to them. The purpose of, of leadership is to 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 bring equip to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Uh, uh, we have what is our ministry? Is is the is is new covenant. Comfort and exhort. Recon the, the ministry of reconciliation. Second Corinthians chapter five, starting with verse seventeen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he goes on to say that the that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to him. And so that's the that's the ministry. Now, are we sufficient as ministers of the new covenant? Mm -hmm. Why? 
Because he is our sufficiency. You know, I, we don't have to be sufficient like, like in, the, in, in the law where it was, it was based upon how good I was as to how well I could minister the law, which nobody could. Mm -hmm. uh, but our ministry, uh, we have, we have uh, the ministry of reconciliation and we're, we're sufficient as ministers because we know the truth uh, and the truth is in Christ and the finished work of Christ. And so that's why we gather together. That's one of the reasons why we gather together is so that we can be equipped to go out there and do the work of the ministry. Um, and so it, the ministry is not all about what just goes on here. I think it's, it's, it's being prepared for what we're going to do. And if we don't know the truth, what does the truth do that says, and you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. free. Free from what? Oh. The law of sin and death. Uh, uh, freedom to live in Christ and, and as opposed to this, this life that, that's based upon what we were born into. And so we have to know what that ministry is before we can give it to share it with somebody else, right? We have to be equipped to understand the truth so we can share that, that, that gospel. And I'm telling you, um, I used to feel um, a pressure to try to go out, of, you know, anybody ever in a church setting before where you feel like you have to go out there and try to get some people to sign on to, to, say, to say the sinner's prayer or whatever. Mm -hmm. I never have that feeling anymore. Now I have, uh, you have an unction by the Holy Spirit when you meet somebody that effectual door of opportunity will open and then you, then you feel this sufficiency of the Holy Spirit in you causing you to be able to say the right thing at the right time to cause their, their, the eyes of their understanding to become enlightened to the truth. And it's so much it's so much fun now. Uh, in fact, you know, um, it, it, it just, you know, when, when somebody bumps into you, I mean, it just, there's a river that starts gushing out. And it's, there's so much life in that river now when you're equipped with the truth of the gospel. It's a beautiful thing now to share the truth of the word with someone. And when you know it, then, then it, it becomes a life force in their, to the, in their hearing that the Holy Spirit begins to try to give them uh, understanding about what you're saying so that's it that's an important part and the other one is for the edifying of the body of Christ so we're here uh, it's right there in verse 12 those two things we're not we're not here to be uh, burdened down and given uh, given uh, 10 steps to try to get this or that the or the other uh, we're here to be edified in the fact of who we are because of what Christ has done identity the two eyes uh, spiritual eyes we have or identity and inheritance uh, if you don't know who you are you'll never you'll never uh, 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 receive what you have in Christ you've got to know who you are in Christ you've got to have an identity amen, amen. and so those things are, those are those are things that he's talking about here now let's go over to Colossians hold your place here we're going to come right back two, two, two letters over Colossians chapter 3 Uh, I like the way he, you know, there's a, there's a section, if you notice, if you go back and forth between, if you hold one place and then go back to the other, you'll notice that there's a, there's two sections coming up. One, put off the old man, and the other one is put on the new man. And if you go to Colossians chapter 3, you're going to find the exact same two things, put off the old man and put on the new man. Uh, but I like the way that, that Paul, in Ephesians, he spends two chapters telling us this about the, the Father's will, the will of the Father, the, the work of the Son, and the witness of the Spirit to give us an identity. He, he spends two chapters doing that. Then he talks about the love of God being shed abroad in our hearts. But in Colossians, he, he doesn't go back through the very, the very same things. But I like the way he starts off chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If then you, you were raised with Christ. Everybody raised with Christ? Yes. What happened after you were raised? You were seated in the heavenly places in Christ. Amen? You're sitting on the mercy seat. You're sitting on the Ark of the Covenant in heaven right now. You're seated there permanently and forever in Christ's finished work. If you were raised, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Again, that goes back to what John was saying about the, the, the things of the world. Amen? Y'all see that? 
shipwreck somewhere there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so he gives this, this, suddenly he gives this reality check for us all. And I, I, I look at this, I, 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 I say this to myself so often, and I'll tell you why here in just a minute. It says, uh, for you died. He's talking about the old man. For you died. And your, and your life, your new life, that's the new man, is hidden with Christ in God. When we were talking about just a little while ago about that, that safety, that security. that See, we, were, we are hidden with Christ in God. We died. Um, and then he goes on to say, when Christ, who is our life, see, Christ, it's not, my life is not mine now. Christ is my life now. He says that in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. He says, I, it's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. Isn't that a, isn't that a restful uh, place to be, a, re, a restful reality to have? Is that I'm not living a life independent from God anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm living my life actually as Him, living through me and in me. What a beautiful reality there. And when Christ, who is our life, appears, you will, you will, you also will appear with Him in glory. What does that say? That last word, verse four in the Passion, Donna. And as Christ Himself is seen for who He really is, who you really are will also be revealed. For you are now one with Him in His glory. Isn't that one? Isn't that a beautiful translation of that? Um, if we don't see Him as He is. And, and we don't know that we died and, and, we're, and our life is hidden here, we, we won't know our, who we are. Until we know who he is, we don't know who we are because who we are is who he is. I hope everybody got that. I can't, I can't say it again, but, but whatever I said, I, I know it was the right thing to say at the end of that moment. Okay. Now, the question, this is the most important question that, that, that was posed to me last night as I was putting this on paper, and I think it's the reality of what we all deal with every week. Uh, how does the enemy attempt to bring fear and discouragement into a believer's life? Gets us to look away from who we are. Yep. Gets us to look away from our true identity. Amen. And start yep. looking at the world. Yeah. And the world system and all of that. Yeah. He tries to separate us from our connection with him as if we are not one and the same. Amen? If, he can get, if, he, if the enemy can, can, can even temporarily, in my mind, sow thoughts uh, that cause me to not, to not recognize what Paul is saying here, to feel like that somehow I'm separated from my connection with the Lord uh, and this oneness that I have with him, then that's, that's the only hope that he has of, 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 of causing fear and discouragement to enter into our life. That's the only, that's the only method is, is to make us doubt this, this point right here, that, we're, that, we didn't, that, we, that, we're not, that we're not hidden with Christ in God. We're not one spirit with him. We're not one uh, flesh with him. If he can, if he can cause us to, to, to not live in the moment of reality concerning that, then that's when... The, a door for him begins to come in to, to sow fear and discouragement. I've had it happen this week to me. Anybody else? Yeah. Well, this that we, we've got to understand. You know, Paul, how did Paul put it? We we, we have to know um, the uh, methods of the enemy's uh, methods. How does he put it? Up? Somebody else may remember the verse. We can't be ignorant of his devices. Yeah. Right? The enemy's devices. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that word. We can't be ignorant. And this is a device to make you feel like you're separated somehow from Christ. Did you have something? Oh, you had, you, your hand went up. I'm quick about seeing hands go up because I love interaction you know, with people. So this is the most important thing that I think that I want to share out of this section of, of Ephesians 4 that he says, and again, he's saying the same thing um, in Colossians chapter three that he's going that we're going to go back to in, in Ephesians four. But that those four verses there are so critical to to the what we used to preach in church was to, to put the old man off and put the new man on, as if that's something 
um, that we do um, as an exercise mm -hmm. uh, instead of a realization. Because see, there's a, re there's a new man that already is perfected. In fact, uh, we're gonna sh let, let's see the two ways he describes the new man here, okay? Uh, Ephesians chapter four, back to Ephesians four, uh, verse, uh, starting with verse 22. Ephesians 4, well, verse 21, if indeed that, that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, and that you put off concerning your form of conduct the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, the lust for things that you think you can accomplish yourself, but it's an impossible thing. Um, and when you get bogged down in that again, then you're gonna miss out on the thing that the fact that we have it all spiritually as an inheritance. We're not trying to achieve anything anymore in our life. Is anybody tired of achievement? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on, I want to receive the things that have been mm -hmm. freely given to me by God. And that's, our, that's, the, that's the, what we're here to do. And he says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. In the world system, you're trying to establish your own righteousness and your own holiness, and you're a fraud. Everybody is a fraud that's attempting to do that. And Jesus went around exposing frauds. But not because he wanted to expose them, but because he wanted them to realize there is no, there, there's no true holiness or righteousness apart from him. He said, you refuse to come to me that you might have life. So um, it was always in love. Everything he did was motivated by love and everything we should do is, should be motivated by love. But the body of Christ is not motivated by love in so many ways today. And I think, I, I pray that in the midst of this pandemic that there's a, re, a retooling, a restructuring of the body of Christ to operate in the same love that he operated in. Amen? Uh, and cause people to recognize this. So here, he says, uh, created in righteousness and true holiness. If you go back to Colossians 3, uh, and, and verse 10, he says, and, and, and you have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. In other words, the, it's like a picture, those old instant, instamatic cameras where you pull it out and it starts to visualize. Never was really a good picture. Uh, <laughs> But you could see it start forming. Well, that's what he's saying there, that the picture, is, is, the, the, the Holy Spirit is helping the clarity of our image become that we're just like Jesus in every way, already perfected. Uh, so you see, he's, he's saying he's saying the same thing there in those two areas. Now, uh, verse twenty, yeah, twenty-four. Now, uh, so the old man. I want to, I want to distinguish between the old man and the new man. The old man is, is us operating in a place that's based upon a condition, our condition. Whereas in the new, with the new man, we're operating from, a, from our position. Uh, and if what the enemy wants to do is get us to go back and focus on our condition, uh, because our condition is often what can be related to things that happen as a result of, of, of our attempt to bring the old man out of our life, there's things that are happening there that remind us of a condition that we no longer are part of, but we can't, we, we can't escape from those, those things in our, that, are, that make up the old man in our condition until we know our position. See, it's position that'll change the conditions. We've been trying to be, we, we've been trying as the body of Christ taught to change our conditions to please God, I mean our, our, our conditions of, of our life, what we're doing, what we're not doing is a way to please God when there's no way to do that except by, uh, by a conviction of our, our position. And that's why he says, and since we're raised with Christ, then that's what, that's what we use in, in the renewing of our mind. We don't, it doesn't, we don't renew our spirit anymore. Our spirit has been perfected uh, once and forever as in, 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 part of the body of Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. We are in, it, it, we, th there's a beautiful expression uh, by Peter that says that we are born again of an incorruptible seed. 
That's a beautiful expression. And it's that incorruptible seed, which is Christ, that can no longer can no longer separate us from who we really are. And so the only place where that attempt goes on, and that's why Paul is talking about that, he preaches Ephesians, he preaches identity, 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 love the love of God, and now here's the things that will identify the positions, the, the place of, of the old man and the new man. But he doesn't skip the other part to get here. He doesn't try to come and tell us, now you shouldn't be doing this old man stuff without giving us an idea of position. He's got to give us a position. So uh, now, uh, go back to, uh, flip over to Colossians 3.17. I, I, I think I just read that. Three, uh, Colossians 3. Oh, no, this is, this is the second most important thing I want you to learn today. It's at the end of the section regarding putting on the new man. Therefore, you know, this is how he starts off the section about the, the new man. Therefore, as the elect of God, did you know you're the elect of God? That you're, that you're, there's a special election that you're part of? Mm -hmm. Holy and beloved? Mm -hmm. Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering. See, we can have the, the, the bond of peace, the unity of the Spirit, when we know that we're the elect of God, holy and beloved, can we? If we think if we think we're separated somehow from Christ, or can be still divided off, then that's where our peace leaves, and that's where our unity leaves. Amen. Mm -hmm. Bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against you, even as Christ forgave you, you also you must do. Mm -hmm. Notice that the forgiveness is because of our forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It's no longer a way to get His forgiveness, like it was when mm -hmm. Jesus preached it under the law. Amen? Amen. Uh, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. What does that mean? I just, oh, God loves us all. You know, no, that's not what it means. That his love has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Uniquely, I've got a pastor friend in California that's been preaching on the love, and I saw Kim was watching the other night. But there's a uniqueness of his love to each one of us. You know, this. One of the things that you know people try to say that that we came you know that there's no that about evolution and all this stuff but this the god love us so i guess i can't get in that battle but, but right here in this six six or seven inch round circle there's seven billion people in the world and not two of those are white have you ever thought about that how how could how can there be seven billion faces and they're all different because he uniquely made us, he uniquely created us, and he uniquely loves us mm -hmm. with the same love that he loves his son. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a beautiful thing, a really reality? Uh, and, and, and let the peace of God rule, that serve as an umpire, that, uh, that's a braveo, mm -hmm. serve as an umpire in our hearts. See, when, when you don't have peace, you know that the enemy is talking you out of your connection, to, to your oneness with Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. let, that, let that be a signal now. Uh, I, I, I just I can't tell you how important that that uh, uh, the, how the, that question is to, to get the right answer of how the enemy attempts to bring fear and discouragement in the believer's life. In the believer's life, there has to be a, an attempt to disconnect us from our knowledge of the Son of God, our oneness with Him. Amen. Amen. Uh, and let the word of uh, and be thankful, and and let the word of Christ dwell in your heart richly. Uh, and all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and so thank, thank God we're not singing with law in our hearts to the Lord anymore mm -hmm. true worshipers are not trying to give him worship mm -hmm. trying to give him something by their worship true worshipers are trying to re are acknowledging what he's given us mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what the worshiper sees looking for uh, and this is verse 17 is where I want you to, the second most important thing today. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him, through him. Now the question in your notes would be, would this be ownership or access? Access. Access, amen. See, that's, this, again, um, if, we're, if we're, if this is just a, a verse encouraging a doing, 
and he leaves out the part through him. I, I've got that. Anybody, if, if, if you don't have a highlighter or draw, put, put underneath the words through him. See, I'm thank, my, my thanks to God is that, that what, everything that I'm doing in word or deed today and, and every day of my life in Christ is through him. It's through him that, I, that I'm living. It's him, it, he is living his life through me. And that's why our hearts can be so thankful because there's no more, there's no more pressure on us to do things, to love people or do things. It should be a spontaneous, uh, because of our spontaneous uh, union with Christ, our knowledge of our union with Christ, then there's a sponta spontaneity that comes from within us and, and, and giving thanks to God the Father through him. See, even, even my heart is, is, can give thanks to God because it's not through me anymore. If there's anything we can give thanks to God for, that it's not that we're not on the hook today to do anything for God. Amen. What's you got one in the passion there? Yeah. So let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips be drenched with the beauty of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, and bring your constant praise to God the Father because of what Christ has done for you. What He's done for us. It starts with what he's done for you, and then it, and it, then it begins to go what he, what he does through you. You have to know what he's done for you, or it can never operate through you. Amen? So everybody understand what I'm saying there? This is so, this is so important. Uh, now, uh, back one more time to Ephesians, because this is, this is very, very important. I keep saying first, second, third important thing, but this, they're, all the, they're all the same importance. You know? It's all right here in the Word. So... Um, chapter 4 starting with verse 29 uh, again I just want to reinforce quickly verse 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind see let, let, the, let the battlefield of your mind be renewed in the knowledge of what you were the, the very image and likeness of your new creation in Christ uh, that's where our renewal has to happen here because it's all we've already been renewed here everything is perfect here in our new creation it's just our mind has to lay hold of that so that we're no longer too, tossed to and fro i i got so i'm, I'm so tired of, of seeing the body of christ to, tossed to and fro by these doctrines of, of uh, you know mixing covenants and all this kind of stuff i'm so tired of seeing what what the enemy is just playing playing games with the body of Christ, like, like the Galatianism is what the whole letter of Galatians is about all that. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearer. Now, we've talked about this quite a few times. But, so what is it, what, what would be a corrupt word that would come out of our mouth? What is a corrupt word that would come out of our mouth? You have to go do this. In other words, yeah. if you don't do or, this, you're not going to get a blessing. Or if you don't, do if you this. don't forget, I'm telling you, this is the old covenant that Jesus. Yeah. People will go back and still tell you this today. Yes. Jesus said, "You're not going to get your prayer answered if you don't, if you don't forgive." See, that's that's a corrupt communication because we're no longer under that covenant where it was up to us. That's why I can thank God through Jesus Christ this morning. But but I think it's so important to the. Do you think he uses the word necessary? Do you think necessary ed edification? you think those two words go together pretty well? Mm -hmm. This edification and building up is necessary for the body of Christ to come out of that con condemnation and sight, that, that old, that the, 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 the world, the spirit of the world mm -hmm. that's causing people to be uh, in, in, the, in that bondage. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, Eric, this, yeah. I, I mean, this makes me think of what you were talking about last week um, the this is the beginning of, uh, this is 29 and it says and never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth but instead let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others yeah so we've got to remember that because we start saying stuff and whether we're quote right or not if it sounds like <coughs> it's um, Hateful words. Yeah. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't. Do that. I'm right. This is. I can't believe you did this. I can't believe you did that. 
There's nothing edifying about that. And people just go like, see, those Christians, they're just like every other Christian. It's all con all they're condemnation. They're hypocritical. And, yeah. yeah, all they're wanting to do is tell me so, And that's a, that's a good example. How did Paul treat the Corinthians? He said, you better quit that. You better quit yeah, that. You tell he them said, who they were. And, do you not know who you are? Yes. Remember we talked about last week as Ephesians, they didn't have the they didn't have the Holy Spirit to start with. Right. And Paul was observing that. They were they were in a self-condemned and condemning mode and they, there was no love in their life. And he said, wait a minute, something's not right here. These are supposed to be, you know, these are disciples, but there's no love shed abroad in their heart. And so that's that's a good 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 analogy. So that's the way we correct people is saying, you know, look, you you don't know who you're, do you know who you are you don't realize who you are that's not what that's not that's not who you really are when you when when we when something does happen uh, and uh, that it may impart grace to the hearers and so for those that you know that uh, and and the last thing I want to show you there is uh, the the next verse verse thirty and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So isn't it interesting, the position of the word grieving the Holy Spirit, we would think, we were taught to think that grieving the Holy Spirit was when we did something wrong. But he's saying we're grieving the Holy Spirit when we're not speaking grace to people. When we're not, when we're not, uh, uh, when we have corrupt words coming out of our mouth. Because see, he's only speaking one language to us. He's not ever speaking condemnation to us. The Holy Spirit He'll try to bring correction and reproof, reproof to us in love, but he never he will never condemn us. So that that corrupt communication, he's not asking us to do anything different than what he's doing. If you think the Holy Spirit is 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 speaking corrupt communication, then you're going to think that's what we should be doing. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought for 40 years of my life that the Holy Spirit was convicting me of my sin, um, and then trying to and, and it's the schizophrenic thing going on with he's trying to convict me of my righteousness and he's trying to convict me of my sin how can the two be in the same on the same plate they can't be you're either perfectly righteous or you're not in Christ they're, 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 somebody that's in Christ is, has a perfect righteousness forever and that's why the Holy Spirit according to what Jesus said in John 16 was that from that point on the Holy Spirit has to convict you has to speak words of grace to you to get you to recognize your position instead of your condition because your position will determine your condition. Amen? Mm -hmm. And that's what he's saying. So uh, grieving the Holy Spirit is, is when we are not giving other people what the Holy Spirit is giving us and wants to give them. See, the Holy Spirit's giving this to us all the time. You know, uh, I heard you know, Rob Rick was talking about in, that he's in, he's in uh, Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. so. He said, he said there, he said when he goes out and you go out in public place, he said the Chinese people are talking all the time. He said they're talking all the time, just talking, 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 you know. And so he said the Holy Spirit's doing the same thing. He's talking all the time to us. Sometimes we're, sometimes we're thinking, I wish the Holy Spirit would, tell, would talk to me. <laughs> and he's talking all the time. He's speaking words of edification and grace to your heart all the time. He's trying to he's trying to lavish the Father's love, of, of, of shed the Father's love abroad in your heart all the time. He's trying to, to, to bring just like we had that atmosphere here when we, when we were doing the, the worship, that there was a, there was that that comfort, that heavy pillow feeling of, of rest that we were that sweetness that we were. He he wants to speak those words to us all the time, and he and he is continuously speaking to us. There's not, not, not a moment of our life, and that's why when, when we get our mind off the things of this world and the things of, of that world, then it's like the radio station. You remember back, well, some of you don't remember those days, but when you're trying to, when, when the station wasn't come in quite right and you were you know, two stations would kind of bleed over each other. Anybody ever had that? Yeah, right. Yeah, so this is, in a way, this is happening in the spirit realm. The enemy wants to try to tell you one thing, and then, but if you have that, just flip the tuner over just a little bit more to where you have the clarity of the voice of the Holy Spirit as being what you're receiving. And I'm telling you, these things that we talked about today, today about this, this fear and discouragement, I think it will begin to, 
to be removed from our life once we once we recognize the motive, the tactic, the, the, the deception of the enemy to, to try to get us dis, distracted and dislodged from our forever oneness in spirit with Christ. We are one spirit with the Lord. Mm -hmm. That is, I mean, that is just, I mean, it's 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 Amen. like Habakkuk said, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something, I'm gonna give you something that's gonna be such good news that you're not gonna be you're not gonna believe it even if it's told you. And that's what we're living in. We're living in a news that's too good. It's almost too good to be true, but is. Mm -hmm. It's great news. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that's how we grieve the Holy Spirit. So let us let us uh, let let us be uh, conduits, which we are, the conduits of the Spirit of the Christ that's in us, the Holy Spirit that's in us. Both, uh, and I and I call this. Uh, you know, the, the, we have two eyes that we receive with our spiritual eyes, uh, but um, we also have ears to which we were hearing. Uh, we're being enlightened by the Holy Spirit, and we're also being edified by the Holy Spirit. Those are the two e the ear, ears, spiritual ears, that we're hearing with. He's in, he's in, he's bringing us the knowledge of Jesus Christ. He's always trying to enlighten us as to the. The, 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 the further depth of understanding about the riches of Christ that we, that we have and we possess and he's trying to edify us uh, as uh, in, our, in our union with him Amen. he's trying to build us up and, and cause us to come into an inheritance that's all he's doing in our life if, if, and that's why again going back to the title of the message the unity of the spirit uh, I love to be in a place like, like I am today uh, where when we're gathered together, we have this unity. There's nothing that can't happen by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Paul said that. He said, "Are you is the Holy Spirit going to do things in your midst because you're of the right the because you're keeping the law or by the hearing of faith? Mm -hmm. It's by the hearing of faith. So it's a wonderful it's a wonderful presence to be in where I know that that all, that we're, the ones that are gathered here in this room this morning. And let us let us you know." The way we make disciples to get them to understand the same truth that we understand, uh, and it's a and it's a joy to be able to share this gospel, uh, even in the, even with the persecution. I've been persecuted in so many different ways, um, but um, I used to try to convince people. Now I recognize that I can thank God uh, that it's through Him that anything is going to happen. It's not if, if I'm if it doesn't happen the way I would like for it to happen, it's not because of me. You know, it's not that, that the pressure's not on me, and that's a that's a gentle way. To, that's why we can be gentle with people. Uh, like Paul said, the uh, some some uh, plant some water, but God gives the increase. And, and the Holy Spirit wants to do two things: He wants to plant the truth, um, and He wants to keep it being watered. And we can't water it unless we're speaking uh, grace to the hearers. That's how we water the seed of the gospel that we plant in somebody's life. Amen. Let's go ahead and take communion together this morning. This is why, you know, when he gives, when he gives anybody that's, that's in a pulpit is either going to pull people uh, into a pit or out of a pit and I think it's so important that you know that the message of the church this morning um, all over the world all over, all over this country it's so vital um, that we are pulling people out and that we're, we're giving them the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ this morning and I just pray that that God will bring correction all that study we did in Revelation was really for the same purpose that he expressed. It wasn't to be condemning. It was it was to put them in a position to where the churches were bringing out uh, his message. Uh, and he talked about anything that had to do with removing a lampstand. It was, it was about removing leadership in the pulpit or people in the pulpit that are going to preach be preaching something besides the truth of what's in Christ, Amen. So I I, I, I pray that that He will begin to, to cause those the, the 
the gifts that he's giving in the body to be to be able to, to be present uh, in, in the hearing of people where they're not going to be hearing the old the, the old messages of the old covenant and we just thank you Lord for doing that uh, I want to for, for communion today I want to go to first Corinthians it just came in my heart right that moment but She may not have time to come in here today. That's what the hotel law. That, that one to check. Yeah, to check and see. Isn't it great to have a Christian at the front desk? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, is she coming or? I had to ring the little bell. <laughs> did she know or does? I she's checking the people out. So okay, no worries. She knows. Okay, well let's go ahead then. And, uh, Paul said, uh, I, "For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was the, which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Uh, do this in remembrance of me.' And then he said, in the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So what we're doing, thank you, Lord, we're doing both of these this morning, we're doing in the remembrance of you, Lord. Um, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So, so this morning we're proclaiming the Lord's death we're, we're pro- proclaiming the broken, the, the, the fact that Jesus' body was broken for us, that our bodies could be mended, they put back together, could be healed. And so uh, we're proclaiming that this morning. And so he says, talks about the unworthy manner. The unworthy manner is to make it about us and not about him. Is this, is this about him or is it about us? Am I trying to clean myself up so I deserve it? Or do I realize I can't deserve it and so I'm going to receive it by grace? So that's what that's what that all that is in there for. Uh, for um, then he talks about the reason many people are, are weak and sick, and uh, and many of them sleep. Uh, again, there's no condemnation here, but he's saying it, it, in Paul's uh, Paul's uh, words, he's talking about the fact that if we're doing it in an unworthy manner and we're thinking it's about us, no wonder we can't receive by grace. If I've got to be, if I've done something wrong that's going to that's going to thwart uh, God's ability to do something good in my body because of my mistake, then that's that's doing this in an unworthy manner. And I'm telling you, we say that we say that kind of somewhat flippantly or lightly sometimes, but this is important because we all deal with that every time. Sometimes, every time something happens in my li- in our lives, even physically, we're thinking, oh well. What's the first thought that comes in our mind? What did I do? Separate us from our oneness with Christ. Amen. What did I do? Mm-hmm. What did I not do? Am I the only one? Yeah. There's a tension there, right, Mark? There's a tension between condition and position, and we're and, and we're, we sometimes we're here, but we know we're there, mm-hmm. and that's where we want to be is there, and so that's what we're going to speak is there. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're with high, and we're heavenly places. That's, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to bring something down from there. I'm trying to bring something down because I'm there and, and, and I'm already seated with Him. Mm-hmm. So, Lord, we just thank you. We're examining ourselves in light of our, our faith and confidence is only in you. Uh, and so, we don't want to. We want to be. It says. Uh, uh, not discerning the Lord's body. We want to discern the Lord's body. And the Holy Spirit, you're, you're the one that's speaking truth to us. And you're the one that wants to have an uninterrupted voice in our heart. And so we just ask you to help us in, our, in, what, in what we don't discern about the body of Christ. So that we, because we want to freely receive. The Father said, if, if, he, if he spared not his own son, but delivered him up from all, for us all, how will he not with him freely give us everything else? So thank you thank you that you put the word freely in there, that there's no cost except to the son. 
And we don't. That's why we don't want to leave anything on the table. I don't want to leave anything on the table. Whatever, whatever he paid to give us, I want to. I want to seek that. I don't want to. I don't want to leave any crumbs on the table. Thank you, Lord, for that. And we, we receive this in, in remembrance of you this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, thank you for revealing even to the Apostle Paul about this being the blood of the new covenant, that this is, this is what you specify, that this new covenant is you standing in the place of us, entering into a covenant relationship with the Father in our place as us. And so Lord, we thank you that this blood covenant that we have can never be uh, uh, annulled because it's, a, it, it's a holy covenant between you and your Father that we get to in, enter into by faith. And so we thank you for your goodness and that, 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 that this new covenant is, is our gift uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Thank you all for being with us this morning. I see uh, different ones there. Uh, so anyway, we'll, we're, we'll let you know this week we're having some issues uh, this next weekend is going to be um, uh, what is it? Labor day. Labor day. Rest day? Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's yeah. labor. Labor, labor to enter in his rest day. <laughs> yeah. 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 Amen. So we're going to next weekend is our labor to enter his rest. So we may we may or may not we'll let you know uh, uh, several days before if we're not going to have a uh, meet together. But we'll let let everybody know. So love y'all. Have a, have a great week. Hopefully we'll see you next week.